Uh, the very last thing I wanted to get your take on, which I've, I've kind of cycled in and out of, and this brand I just randomly picked up at Air One because I was like, oh, you know what, I want some of um, exogenous ketones. What your, what's your current take on the ketones that you can eat? They're, they're efficacious. I mean, like if, if you want to shift yourself into, you know, what you could arguably say is, a, is an unnaturally high state of ketosis, that you would, from an ancestral standpoint, had achieved via fasting and carbohydrate mitigation, but you want to stack extra ketones on top of that for extra fuel for the liver or the diaphragm or the brain or the heart. If you are an athlete and you want rocket fuel, you take you know, a good carbohydrate gel, you know, like glucose and maltodextrin or fructose and maltodextrin. And then you take ketones at the same time and you can have elevated levels of blood glucose and ketones. So you've got like the oh, best the of both time. worlds oh, floating through wow. your system at the same time. It's useful for that. Um, ketone esters particularly are very good at modulating the NF kappa B pathway, which can shut down inflammation, particularly related to something I know you're, you're keen on uh, jet lag or airline travel. Oh my so God, if you take yeah. some ketone esters before you fly or after you fly or both, not only is it a great appetite suppressor and a calorie restriction mimetic, but it also shuts down a lot of the inflammation associated with jet lag. So, um, you know, Dom Agostino has done a ton of research on ketones for neural inflammation, for TBI, for concussion. Uh, I've used them when free diving and spear fishing to increase breath hold time, which they work well oh, no for kidding. also. So, um, again, it's a, it's a cool tool in the toolbox. I, uh, yeah, you know, I don't think they taste all that great, but uh, the the safety and efficacy profile is pretty good. Uh, you would have to take a lot to shift yourself into ketoacidosis, like you'd have to be you know 10, 11 millimolar of, of ketones. Uh, however, if you're taking a, a you know, regular dosage of it, and you're one of those people who measures ketones with a with a blood or a breath based ketone monitor, and normally you're at one or two, or maybe on a good day, three, you take that stuff and you're like instantly at seven to eight millimolar. So I mean, it shifts you into ketosis extremely wow. fast. I only have yeah. one way to test and it's the breath, little breath acet acetone, the little shh. Uh, is it the keto, K-E-Y? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the keto, the level, all those are, right. are approximating blood levels of beta hydroxybutyrate by measuring breath acetone. It's somewhat accurate. You know, it's not as accurate as a yeah. blood measurement, but far more convenient. And it works for most people to give yeah. you a decent idea. It's just funny because I test and I'm like, I haven't eaten any carbs in like a day and I still never get above a three though, which is yeah. like light ketosis. I'm like, what yeah. the hell? And I think that's what prompted me. I was like, you know, I'm going to take some goddamn ketones. What I notice when I take the exogenous ketones is I have an incredible amount of energy. Yeah. It's crazy. And like mental energy too. It's really good yeah. for focus and stuff. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's where I'm at with it. Okay, yeah. last thing in the kitchen is... You know, I've gone back and forth with a few different coffees. I don't have it in the bag, I have it in here. But then I saw that you were doing coffee and I thought, those are your beans. Oh my gosh, that, right? smells, that smells like Keon. And so, yeah, yeah, Keon coffee. And I was like, well, if Ben's doing it, it's gonna, he's gonna be doing it right. And then I read kind of the stats on the, on the Keon site and it's not only tested for mold, but there's like higher antioxidant levels and all this next level shit. So give me like the spiel on yeah, why your we, coffee's um, awesome because it's what I'm on now. I hey, have, and I have it on my side. Hey, it just too. cups really good. I mean, we, we had it cupped by some different professional cuppers, and like it ranks very high for, for its cupping score, meaning the flavor profile is just really good for espresso, for French press, for you know, regular drip coffee, pour over, whatever. Um, the beans are hand selected for symmetry, so there's not a lot of chipped beans meaning that the roasting is very even, and that contributes to that flavor profile being so good. Oh, trippy. Um, it's all you know, single origin, only 3% of the coffees in the world are organic, and this is organic. Um, I think the batch right now is Guatemala and Costa Rica for the, for the beans. And then um, we, we package it uh, using like a nitrogen flushing type of packaging, so it's extremely fresh. Uh, there's always a roast date on it. Um, don't keep it in your freezer like a lot of people do. Like keep it room temp. You know, as soon as you get the bag, these these type of containers you have that where you push down and you get yeah. all the air out of it. I like the one uh, Coffee Gator has a good container I use for that. Um, just sucks all the air out of the coffee, and uh, yeah, it's it's organic, uh, very symmetrical bean. Uh, we tested it against 43 other brands of coffee, 
and it ranked the highest in terms of antioxidants and had, I think there was one other coffee that had a, a, like a slightly higher score on antioxidants and then the mold and mycotoxin profile is basically non-existent, which you know, for me is the biggest thing. Like I don't want mold or mycotoxins oh on my coffee. God, yeah. And so there are, there are a lot of coffee companies that are organic or have high antioxidant or cup really well or have low mold and mycotoxins um, or are from farms where it's, it's you know, sustainably sourced and ethically grown, uh, but Keon ticks all of those boxes, uh, which I don't think many other coffees do. So, I'm stoked, I love yeah. it. Um, last thing on the coffee is, I think I heard you talking about how the oils in the coffee get oxidized if you grind it and let it sit there, so that you always recommend grinding the coffee, which is what I do right before you make it and doing you grind a French it right press. Before you so make if you're it. buying like exactly. bags of coffee that are already yeah. ground, those oils are oxidized, is right. that true? Exactly, and I mean, it's, it's a, you know, you cut open an apple and eat it five hours later, it's just not as good. It oxidizes, it's, it's browned, it changes the flavor profile, so you want a fresh grind. Yeah. Right. Fresh grind and an appropriate grind, right, like coarse grind for French press, uh, uh, you know, thinner grind for, for an espresso. So that's important as well. I, right. I grew up with a father who was a gourmet coffee roaster and had to learn a lot about, you know, the, the settings on the grind for espresso versus French press. And the water is very important too. Um, aside from the bean, the type of water that you use is one of the most important things for coffee. And uh, if you use uh, structured water, you know, water that, that has that, that, you know, extra bit of bonding you know, between the, the hydrogens and the oxygen and, and the, the external vessel within which the water is contained, you get a better flavor profile on the coffee.